Hey again everyone, I'm back. This is Martin from How To Make Mobile Games and we're continuing the Pong series tutorial here inside of Unity. First off, I just want to say thanks to everyone for commenting the past couple of days, this past week. Um, I see a lot of you sort of coming back and giving some comments and, and saying how good you, the videos are and that you really like them and that they're really helping. This is awesome. Thank you so much for doing that. It really sort of pumps me up and, and you know keeps me going and it's great to see that you guys are getting something out of this. Uh, you know, the, the comments and questions are excellent as well. It, it sort of helps the, vi the videos become more visible. And so, you know, I'm going to keep on doing these. And this week, uh, a few days ago, I also released the, uh, I started the series of videos, which is about the mobile game business. And it sort of focuses on more of the how to make revenue, how to make money inside of mobile games. So definitely check that out. You guys should find that useful, uh, especially if it's your sort of first time coming into the mobile game industry and you're looking to start making some revenue. So check out those videos anyway. So the last thing that we did in the Pong tutorial here is we, I think we added in this grid background here, if I can remember correctly, and I sort of had that scrolling down. And I think the other thing that we did is the Pong paddle, we made that a little bit more interesting. Uh, you know, we sort of added the curves on the side and I added these little sort of two kind of bumpers to the top here just to make it, you know, look a little bit more interesting, give it a, a bit, the bounce, a little bit more variety. So I think it looks cool as well because it kind of looks like an old... Uh, I don't know, Atari 2600 spaceship that you might see in an old Space Invaders game or something like that. Uh, and I'm all about the retro, so that's cool. So uh, today, what we're going to do basically is add in these bonus areas. Um, the game that I'm basing this around, as I've said before, is is the game that we finished at Cobble Play called Ping Pong Pinball X. And that's available on iPhone for free. Uh, and in that game, what you do is basically, if the ball goes through this sort of two, this goal area, and if... Uh, sort of like uh, two walls at the top, then as it goes through you get an extra 100 points. So we're going to do something pretty much like that here so you guys can, can show that and it makes the game a little bit more interesting as well. So the first thing that we need to do is we're going to create an empty object. So go to game object create empty. Make sure that's set to 000. zero, zero. And I'm going to call this one uh, what did we just say? I'm just going to check the name here, just so I've, I've not, just so I'm getting it right. So bonus area object. So tap enter. Bonus area object. Okay. So that's our empty object, and nothing visual inside the object right now. It's just an empty object that exists in the game scene. So okay. So we need to copy the vertical wall. Yeah. Okay. So that's the one we did before. So. What we've got right now is we're basically going to have these two goals, uh, like a goal on either side is going to have a wall and if the ball goes through then we get points. As we already created these walls here, we can simply reuse these and copy them and just shrink them down to make the, the bonus area. So I'm just going to select the left one. I'm going to click on Command and C and then Command and V to copy it, or Control and C and Control and V if you're on a PC. I'm going to left click and drag this up so it's a child of the bonus area object because we want it to, we want everything to be under this one object so it's nice and neat and it just keeps everything all together which is very useful when we move things around so what we can do now is I'm just going to change this wall with the wall selected I'm going to change this to 000 in the x y and z and you can see that's copied and the original one is still there I'm going to tap on uh, R to scale it and if you can I'm going to just click alt and just move around slightly so that you can see here it's uh, this green the the y-axis scale tool I'm just gonna make that a little bit smaller just left clicking and dragging down so I think that size is okay I'm gonna click on the z-axis uh, controller there just so it shows me the 2d front view quickly zoom in by using the scroll wheel on the mouse and I think that's okay there I'm gonna move this one to minus 0 0.5 I'm gonna right click sorry left click and then I'm gonna copy and paste another wall by using command C and command V and I'm gonna make this one 0 0.5 so I think that might be okay it might be a little bit too thin but we're gonna play around with this anyway so let me just check my steps guys and I'm not moving ahead of myself too far so copy the vertical position as a child create another wall Okay, that's fine. So let's just double, let's just check that this is working right now. 
I remember as these walls, we originally set these up as, as walls that have, uh, have a collider on them. So when the ball hits, it's going to bounce off. And since these, are, these walls here are copied, it should work exactly the same. So I'm going to click on the bonus area, click on W, and I'm just going to drag this up in the air slightly just to check that the bounce is working. And notice that it's staying on Z is zero. It has to always stay on zero because the ball will always stay on zero in the Z, in the Z plane. So we have to have everything that interacts with the ball on the Z plane as well, okay? At zero on the Z plane. Just click on play. And I'm just checking that it's going to bounce off these. There we go, yeah, perfect. Okay, just gonna hold command and select both of them. Or if you hold control and select both of them on a PC, click R, and I'm just gonna shrink this down slightly. I think that's fine. And that's just, that's just my choice. You guys can obviously shape and resize these however you like. You can use circles here, different shapes, whatever you want to use. Okay, so the next thing is, and let me just double check. So create a cube. Okay, so I'm going to go to game objects, create other, then I'm going to go to cube, and I'm going to put this cube left holding and dragging underneath the bonus area object and set that to zero, zero as well. And I'm just going to resize this, holding onto the cube, clicking on R, and left drag to resize, and I'm going to move it down slightly as well move it in a little bit and what this cube box is uh, this box will not actually interact with the ball it won't deflect the ball or anything like that this cube is just going to be used so that we can detect when the ball has gone through those two goal posts okay and it right now it's a visual object you can see it but we're going to turn that off later uh, so that you can't see that, that that cube the only reason I've used the cube is so that I can visually see where I'm placing it inside of the scene but then I'm going to make it invisible later so it's really useful. That, uh, the, the only thing that is actually going to work inside of this cube in the inspector is this box collider here. This mesh filter and mesh renderer, we don't need that, but it's just visually so that we can move it around in the editor and we can get like a nice positioning without uh, quite easily because the visuals are turned off. Okay, so let's make this a little bit wider. That's fine. Okay, and I think we're going to give us a different name, box area. Yes, bonus area detection box. Okay, so click on the cube, enter, bonus area detection box. Click enter. Okay, and I think the next thing is we needed to add a script to this. Yes, okay, so I'm just going to click enter. I'm going to command and copy this text. I usually do this an easier way to get text written. Uh, Right-click on the Pong scripts, go to Create, JavaScript, and Command and V, or com uh, Control and C if you're on a PC, and make that a big V at the start. Okay, so there we go. We've got our bonus area detection box script. So we want to open this by double-clicking, and whichever uh, whichever editor you've def selected as your default, in my case this is Mono Develop, should open up. And I've already got the code in here. And I'm going to just paste this in. So, and I'm going to talk through this so you guys know what's going on here as well. Okay. So, uh, so what we've got here is basically this script, this bonus area detection box, is going to be added to this box here. Okay, and that's going to detect when the ball goes through. The function that we use to detect whenever two colliders hit each other is this on trigger enter, or we can use on collision enter. Okay, in this case, we're going to use on trigger enter. So, um, when, for example, when the ball goes through this square area, what we're going to do is we're going to check if the collision, which is this one here, the the function itself receives a collision, which is the collision of the object that's passing through it. So this is the square. As the ball goes through this square, that bonus area square, it will call this function uh, whenever anything goes through that. So what we want to do is we want to check if it's the ball. Okay, so we're checking if the collision, uh, the transform of the collision, the name of that transform equals ball, then do this here. Okay, and if you remember, I think we spoke a few weeks ago, 
if we want to get more detail in, in a particular, like, um, uh, say, a, a piece of information that's quite, which is more detailed, we use this dot syntax here. So this is like saying, um, for example, if we needed to get the, the information from a, uh, a line in a book, we're saying book dot page 11 dot line 2 dot word 4 equals ball, for example. So that's what that dot syntax does. It makes it more and more specific so that we can get this name information here. And we're checking the name because we don't want it to react to anything else. We just want it to react to the ball. So that's why we've got this ball here in the inverted commas, which is a string, which is a piece of text. Okay. So I hope you guys are with me on that one. Uh, you know, don't worry about these programming concepts too much. This will begin to make sense as, as you just get into the flow of coding and, and just start to do more tutorials. It will make it will become pretty easy because these uh, these strings and these uh, this dot syntax is pretty common in all languages, uh, you know, and especially in Unity. So. In this situation, if, it, if the ball does go through those boxes, okay, if it, the collision is detected, we want to do something. In this case, we're going to call a function inside of the main game script, which is this one here that we wrote, and we're going to call this add score for bonus area. So if we go into the main game script, and I'm just going to go back to my notes here, and I'm going to put in another function which adds the bonus score. Okay, now we could do it in update score here. So what we're doing is when the ball goes through, we're going we're gonna call this function on the main game script, which is this here. So add score for bonus area. And like I say, we could do it here in update score, but I wanted to keep it kind of simple and keep the bonus air the bonus score in one area. So it's just a little bit more visually simple for you guys, okay? And for me as well, of course. And all this does is it adds 50 points to the score. So remember, plus equals adds the score plus the extra one. So we could write score equals score plus 50. But in this case, the plus equals just makes it a little bit faster to write, and it's quite intuitive. So add 50 points to the score. And what I usually do is I add in a comment here, and it just says this is called from bonus area dot js inside on trigger enter. And that's just a reminder to tell me, hey, like this has been called from outside of this script, and it's it's just an easy way for me to pick up on on anything. If I come back to this code later, stuff like this becomes very useful. Remember, two forward slashes at the start of a at the start of a line means that it's a comment, and it won't be compiled. It's just for us programmers and coders to understand easier what's going on in the code. Okay, so I'm just going to click Command and S or Control and S to save this. I already saved the box area detection box, uh, bonus area detection box script. Go back into Unity. Bottom right, it's going to compile. Everything should be okay. 